You know, there's a, there's a time in my life where when I would go through a breakup, the first thing that I would do in the morning is think of them. And the first thing I would do at night is, is constantly think of them. And you know, in the morning I would think about them waking up with somebody and what they're doing and them going to work and how, how, how could they not love me? How could they not care about me? You know, you love them so much that you think that they would actually love you back because the love that you have is an ocean. It's, it's an ocean of love. And they don't even show any interest in you. They have you blocked. They're not talking to you. They're talking to somebody else. How could they? And then at night, it gets bad at night, you know? For me, I struggled at night a lot. I did. Because I would imagine them being with somebody, sleeping with somebody, kissing somebody, fucking somebody, sucking somebody off. I would, I would think about this vulgarly. I, I would lose my mind in these thoughts. And you know, I would result to pornography. I would do all this kind of stuff when I was younger. I would sit there and just torture myself. The pornography feels good for a second, but then after that's done, you just feel even worse. Because you know it wasn't real. And you know what they're getting is real. And that dopamine kick that you get is just so psychologically bad. This is like four or five years ago I would feel like this. It's terrible. And so I would think to myself, like, how, how, how can I function? How can I function? And today I want to talk about the breakup reserve account. Something that nobody talks about. I don't think anybody's ever talked about this, but I'm going to be the first. You've got to have money to date. You've got to have money to date. I don't care what the fuck people say. You have to have money to date. I'm coming at you raw. I apologize that I'm cursing, but I'm just being very honest with you. So many people in this world will be like, you don't need a lot of money to date. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. You need money to date. Even if you're a girl, you need money to date. First off, if you can't take care of yourself financially, how can you expect somebody else to come into your life and find value in you? If you can't even pay your own bills, how do you expect someone to come into your life and find you know, some level of compatibility with you? It just doesn't make sense. I know girls that make nothing. They make absolutely nothing. They're driving around with their bumper hanging off and they're like, oh, I want a man that makes this much money. And yet they're the ones that go to breakfast with their girlfriends and the bill comes around and their girlfriend's like, hey, Venmo me this money. I want to put it on my card. And they check their bank account and they got to dim their screen and, you know, decrease the brightness because they're afraid and they're embarrassed and they know they have nothing, but they still have this delusional mindset that they deserve this. I know guys that get into a relationship like, oh yeah, I'm going to get in a relationship, but I don't have money to pay for dates. Like I don't have money to court women. Listen, any coach that's telling you that you can go 50, 50 and that's the preferred route. And this is what you want to do. Like that's, that's not the best philosophy. Like you can have a 50, 50 relationship. I'm telling you this, but it ain't the best way to do it. You want to really get women in your life, especially those really attractive, beautiful women. You're going to have to pay man, because some guy is willing to pay and you've got to be able to compete on that level. There's some guys that are willing to give her all the attention in the world. And you know, I'm not that guy because I'm busy and I have a purpose and I have things to do. But you know, when it comes to financially taking care of things, I'm there. And if you're going 50, 50 with her, guess what? I'm just going to outbid you. Seriously. You're not going to compete with guys who are just financially stable. So you've got to get financially stable and it's a level of it. You don't have to be a multimillionaire or a billionaire or anything like that. You just got to be able to take care of yourself. So before you date, you've got to be able to have financial stability. And then you have to have a reserve account for every category of your life. And the seven layers of life I talk about, the reserve account. So, you know, when you go through a breakup, you got to have a reserve account. And what do you mean the reserve account? Like, let me tell you something, right? If I'm not doing well mentally, if something happens to me where it just messes me up, I go through a traumatic situation, I've got to have a mental reserve account. This means I have money set aside for coaching, for therapy, for help to get my mentality where it needs to be. And it's different for different people. Like I got a lot of money set aside for each category. Trust me, because I'm going to need a little bit more and I want to get done. I want to, I want to accelerate the healing, but I got money set aside for coaching. I pay for coaching right now. I pay over $10,000 a month just in coaching. But if I go through a uh, difficult time, I might need additional coaching. I might need someone to like hold my hand through this moment. Things happen in life. And then uh, the physical, the physical uh, reserve account, right? Sometimes you're just not on your goals. Sometimes you're not doing what you need to be doing physically. Right? There's moments in our life where we get off our goals. You got to hire a personal trainer. All a personal trainer will do is keep you accountable to your goals. They're not going to teach you. Like a lot of times people think, oh, personal trainer is going to get me into shape. They're going to get you into shape by getting you in the gym. It's not that they're going to treat, uh, teach you this amazing workout that you can't find on YouTube. All of that stuff is on YouTube university. It's all free. You don't need to pay a personal trainer to learn how to squat, to lift, to work out. But you know, sometimes when you're not on top of your goals, hire a personal trainer, they'll get you in the gym and they'll work out hard with you. Number three, 
your finances, your reserve account. You gotta have backup finances for your finances. You've gotta have money that you put away that is an emergency fund. A lot of financial advisors talk about the emergency fund. Dave Ramsey talks about it, you know, and, and you know, you can talk about like a one month, a three month, six month, and a year emergency fund. The first thing that you should do is have one month of bills saved up. I'm not gonna get into a financial literacy course here. I talk about this stuff a lot and I could talk about it for, for literally days, but one month is, is good first, then you get to three months, then you get to six months, and then you get to 12 months. You have a year's worth of savings. This is what I always recommend. And then you start investing, and then you start investing. So number one is having the emergency fund. Then it's second, getting asset protection, like insurance, getting your healthcare set up, all that kind of stuff. Then three months, then six months. Okay, then you can start being a little bit more conservative with your investments, then 12 months, then you can get risky. Okay, this is just the, the basic guideline formula. So you have a backup reserve account for yourself. God forbid something were to happen, it's your emergency fund. Then you have a family reserve account. Something happens to my mom, I gotta be there. You know, you gotta have money for your family. Like some, sometimes things happen in our family. You know, a, a funeral happens, someone passed away, you gotta help out. Someone gets into a medical uh, situation. Like you might have to be responsible and help out. And for those of you that are like, oh, I'm too young. You know, my parents, like you gotta step the fuck up. Step the fuck up, you know? The sooner that you're able to help your family out, the sooner that you become a boss in your own life. The sooner that you're more qualified to have your own family. The sooner that you're more qualified to even date. I mean, family and dating is a very similar thing. If you're not taking care of your family, you shouldn't even be dating. That's another thing I'm gonna harp on here. How the fuck are some of you guys taking your girlfriend out to dinner when you're not taking your own parents out to dinner? How does that make sense? How? How are some of you girls spending money on tickets to go see fucking Drake and you're not even getting your mom a gift just for being your mom? What kind of logic is this? What kind of lifestyle do you guys live? These people sacrifice for you, they work for you, they dedicated their entire lives for you, and you're not giving back to them? You're not contributing to their retirement? It's a fucking selfish way to live. Really selfish way to live. I have no room for people like that in my life. So you gotta have a family reserve account. God forbid if something were to happen to your family. On top of that, you should be taking care of your family. Number five, social circle. You know, you've gotta have money to take care of your friends. God forbid something happens. I had to give a buddy of mine $1,500 because you know he just didn't have money. He's a good friend of mine. Still hasn't paid me back, right? But hey, it is what it is. I had the money and I can give it to him. I had a buddy of mine that had his dog in the hospital and nobody, he didn't have money on his card, he couldn't pay it. I had to pay for his dog, you know, to go through surgery. And you know, it's a terrible situation to be in. Unfortunately, the dog didn't survive. And it's sad, it really hurts. And you know, he paid me back and everything like that, but you know, you gotta be there for people. You gotta be there to help people. You've gotta be there for people, your friends. Because that's, something happens to me when I wasn't, you know, doing well. Like, I didn't have friends that would really help me out like that, but like, I wish I did. I wish I really did. And, you know, being that friend that's responsible is something that is, is a, a talent in itself. You've got to have a reserve account for your social circle. Now, hobbies and recreation, this is a little tricky one. Sometimes things go bad. Let's say sometimes my piano might break down. You know, I got to have money to fix it, right? It's not something that I upkeep all the time. But, you know, there's certain things that I have to have to make sure that my hobbies and recreations are in, in place because that mentally stabilizes you, right? Sometimes you have to get equipment. You know, um, I, I, I don't necessarily consider the podcast a job, honestly, but I don't consider it a hobby either. But sometimes we need to order equipment for it and sometimes something breaks or we need new light or a new microphone. I gotta, I gotta have a reserve account for that. That's all good. But the last thing, relationships, the breakup reserve account, the breakup reserve account. Here's where I come full circle, okay? You have to have money when you go through a breakup for your relationships. I don't know how to tell you guys this, but breakups are not, they're not fucking free. They cost a lot of fucking money. I remember going through a breakup where I was unfunctional for two months, two months, never again. I didn't work. I sat in my place. I sat in my beautiful penthouse and I did fucking nothing. I cried all day like a fucking baby over this girl that didn't like me, that cheated on me over this girl. I was so obsessed with her and I was so sad and you know what? I lost a lot of money. You gotta have a breakup reserve account for that. You gotta have money to pay for a personal trainer. You gotta have money to pay for a dating coach. You gotta have money to get back out there and invest in the hobbies. You gotta get, have money to travel. I think the number one thing that you can do during a breakup is to travel. Get yourself out of your situation that you're in, your hometown, whatever it is, and start getting out there. And a lot of people say, oh, sue me, I don't have $2,000 to spend on a vacation. I don't have $1,000 a month to spend on a personal trainer. I don't have $500 a month to spend on coaching. You shouldn't have been in a relationship in the first place. Breakups are gonna cost you five to 10,000. I'm telling you right now, you, you have no idea. They cost a lot of money. Going through a breakup and healing from it 
Like it's, it's like a surgery that you have to do on yourself. Going through a breakup, got to hire a personal trainer because I got to get in better shape. Going through a breakup, I got to get more uh, mentally disciplined. Got to hire somebody to, to help me there. Going through a breakup, I've got to travel because I can't sit in this apartment every day because I used to see her every single day and I got to meet more women. So I got to go out to the clubs and I got to go out to the bars and I got to spend money there and I got to take care of myself physically. I got to buy more things to look better. Breakups are not free. Get it through your head. So you have to understand there has to be a reserve account for your breakup in itself. You've got to have, like, I got money saved up for the breakup. If I go through a breakup, I can tap into my bank account, uh, reserve account, bam, boom, use this money. Seriously, that's like how my life is set up. I got accounts for accounts and different things for different things. I have money divided up to where I can use it and, and, and distribute it and deploy it. It's a resource of mine. If I need this, I can use this. So for all of you out there that are in a relationship right now and you don't have a breakup reserve account, build the breakup reserve account. Oh no, we're never gonna separate. We're always gonna be together. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. You're lying to yourself. I'm being vulgar with you because you need someone to tell you to, to you need someone to be harsh on you right now to snap you out of that mindset. And if some of you are like realistic, like, hey, look, I, it might not work out, you know? Yeah, get a breakup reserve account. Get a reserve account. It's gonna help you. It really is. Because you never know if one day you wake up, they cheat on you. That's the gamble you take in relationships. Some of you might say, why would I even date in the first place? Well, dating is the most beautiful thing you can do. The person that you love and care about being in your life, that's so beautiful. It's so amazing. Being married and having a legacy and having children, that's amazing. Life has no meaning without this stuff. But there is always a chance that something could happen. Driving a Ferrari is really nice. There's a chance that it could go bad or it can explode or it can get in a car accident. Having a yacht is amazing. There's a chance that it could sink. Having a private jet is awesome. Chance that, you know, it could, something bad could happen. There's always a chance that something could happen. And with a lot of those things, we have insurance. We have car insurance. We have yacht insurance. There's jet insurance as well. I'm telling you, there's cell phone insurance. There's all sorts of insurance. But what insurance do you have on your relationship? What insurance are you carrying on your own mental sanity after the relationship ends to get you back out there? You are the one thing that keeps you in your life. You're the person that wakes up every single day and goes to work and stays functional and provides for you, your family, whoever it might be in your life. You can't afford to stop working. You can't afford to stop. You need to have insurance on yourself. Not only life insurance, right? That's a whole other conversation. Not only health insurance, it's another conversation, but breakup insurance in case your heart gets broken, in case you go through trauma, in case you go through pain, you need to have money deployable so where you get $10,000, you're like, okay, go on this vacation, get a personal trainer, eat this way, have someone cook for you because I was unfunctional. I was, I couldn't do anything. And thank God I had good people in my life and money that I could deploy to go on vacations, to hire people to help me out, to cook for me, to take care of me, to be there for me. Like, it's not that I'm paying my friends to take care of me, but I need to hire a chef to cook for me. I need to hire someone to, to kind of help me around the house, a maid because I was messy, because I'm unfunctional. I had to hire a personal trainer to get me back in the gym and be like, hey, look, you're going through a breakup, get the fucking shape. Because the number one thing that this person's gonna hate more than anything else is seeing you come out winning, seeing you come out healing seeing you come out in better shape, looking good. I had a designer that I hired to come change stuff in my closet. I'm not gonna lose. I'm not gonna lose a breakup and more importantly, I'm not gonna be unfunctional. You're the person that is the boss of your life. You're the CEO of your life. There's also key man insurance for businesses. I don't know if you guys know this, but you know, if a key business figure dies, there's a lot of insurance that pays out. You've got to have insurance on yourself and that is the breakup reserve account. So. If you guys have any questions on this, on the Breakup Reserve account, feel free to DM me. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I know I was kind of harsh in this, uh, in this episode here, but you know I do it because I care. I do it because I love you guys and because this is stuff that happened to me and I, I don't want anybody else to go through it. It was really, really bad to go through it by myself. There was times I didn't have the Breakup Reserve account and I had to deal with the breakup and I was unfunctional and it wasn't good. So I don't want you to go through that. And you know, more than anything, Appreciate you guys spending time with me here today. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you decided to spend it with me. So love you guys. Talk soon.